it should say recording up at the wee corner now. Yep. Yep. Okay, hi guys. So welcome back. We've got another wee session here. Today we've got Matthew Gibb joining us, who is an undergraduate commercial music student and full-time musician. So he's going to be answering some questions for us. So hi, Matthew. Nice hi, April. How's it going? Um, so we'll just start. What um, inspired you to do music? What, like that developed your passion? What? Where did it all begin? Um, so I'd say it probably probably began when I was like maybe five or six years old. My granddad used to pick me up from school and he used to have a car with a cassette player. And this, uh, it, it'd only have like three cassettes and like one was, I think it was the Red Hot Chili Papers. Uh, one was Elton John and one was uh, George Michael. So I always wanted to like, it's the first time I can remember properly getting goosebumps at a song and I don't think yeah. I'll ever forget that. So um, ever since then I was like, oh, I really want to sing, I want to play some music. So. Nice. No, that that's such a lovely memory to have as well. Um, yeah, it's really fond memories of kind of that time, uh, and just like the whole picture of the, the the red car and jumping in the car and listening to some cassette tapes is pretty cool. Yeah, so that's really really nice. So, Matthew, you've done a lot of busking um, throughout your years from younger up until now. Sure so. Would you, do you want to give us some advice for anybody that wants to do busking, what sort of equipment they could use? Um, equipment wise, I had a, a very interesting road into that because I started using a, a battery powered amp. It was, I can't even remember the company that made it, but it was a big kind of hunk of uh, nonsense. And okay. it took these massive uh, D batteries and it cost me about, I think it was 15 pounds every hour to keep it going um ah. so there was no point in keeping that running and uh soon after I got a rolling street cube which did me really well and uh there, you see some buskers that use the aar amps but those amps are about 1500 pounds they're, they're not That's worth awesome. sustainably getting like uh, well they're not sustainable um for the first uh, few months of busking so like if you want one of them go ahead but uh, i'd totally stick with a rolling street cube they're, they're great battery pair amps and they give you a really good life. Do you know how much roughly they are? Um, so there's there's two. Uh, the normal street cube I think is about £200 and the EX is about 450 and that's the one I'm using at the moment. Um, they're uh, really kind of good crystal clear clarity yeah. amps and good, uh, good bang for your buck. And I'm sure like if there's people out there that weren't able to afford the amps you can still go out on the street with a guitar, with whatever instrument you do, and stand and busk without a mic. Do you know what I mean? It's still you can still do that and work your way up. Maybe from the money that you get from busking to buying yourself an amp. Totally, um, it's uh, might wreck your voice to start with. Uh, I can't really <laughs> um, can't compete with all these street opera singers. The people that are uh, really uh, they have some sort of backbone in their voice that just kind of projects it out. Um, and I'm just sitting there. I'm like, I'll stick to my microphone. Thank you. <laughs> I know I would be exactly the same. Um, so what sort of places like have you bust, uh, bust that? Could you just give us an idea? So there was, uh, the first place I busked was on the corner of, uh, well, it was on Buchanan Street and where St. Vincent Street intersects the, uh, well, intersects, goes right through. So there's traffic kind of going across the street and I was right next to the road. I had a sign tied up to the tree and that was the first place I ever busked. A lot of people say it's a bit of a weird place to go because of so much traffic, but uh, yeah, it was so much fun. Um, just that first time, it was like an hour of totally serene, just playing music and people enjoying themselves. Yeah. So, uh, but all the way up and down Glasgow's high streets, there's amazing places to busk. There is a rule that you have to be 50 meters from the next person. Right, so, that's an important point to make then. So you need very to important. Uh -huh. Okay. And... Uh, yeah so if you're 50 meters away and i mean you can roughly measure it out but there's certain spots that are kind of designated spots there's like a tgi fridays for the down house of fraser's yeah apple store and like you stay 50 meters away from the next person you'll have no hassle and uh, trying you, to like if you're going like regular so say you're going every weekend do you just kind of get to know who's at what area or do you just constantly yeah. change I mean, I've spent most of my lockdown on Zoom calls with some of the other buskers. Um, I've been playing video games with some of them as well. So it's, You've uh, actually made friends throughout busking? 
hundred percent. Yeah, there's so many interesting characters that you meet. People that kind of come and go through different cities, and people yeah. that are kind of mainstays stay around the city a lot. Um, and yeah, all great people. So uh, obviously, like I've heard you like as a friend talk about these people to me and that, and they sound amazing. Like, so see for someone that was maybe want to go into basking but was feeling nervous, like. Would you say that they should go up and speak to buskers in the street and just ask for a bit of advice? Do you think that's something useful for people to do? Um, well, to be honest, I never really had uh, real nerves before busking. Um, I was uh, shaking on my first time busking because I was so nervous, but I never spoke to anybody. Right. I wasn't that good at like maintaining eye contact with people. But uh, yeah, I just I just went and did it. Mm-hmm. Like, well, once you throw yourself in at a deep end, I think it's uh, it's all plain sailing from there. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Um, so obviously, like as you develop, so you've built up some skills and you're starting to get noticed by people. Like, so how did you go about getting booked for your first gig? So it was quite a funny story. Uh, my neighbours, uh, their son-in-law, uh, writes songs, and he's he's just an incredible songwriter in general. I think he's. He's got a song called Standing in My Father's Shoes. His name's Stephen McGuire. And uh, he recommended somebody who was running a sort of open session thing that you had to book in for awesome. down in Sean's. Uh, it was a pub called Jay's Bar. And it uh, doesn't exist anymore. But um, I went down and I played like five songs. Again, shaking, nervous. But then as soon as that first gig was done, it was, uh, yeah, you, 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 uh, you meet people. And uh, the people that you, you meet know this person and it's like it's like a massive circle a community we're just getting bigger every time you you meet somebody it's it's interesting you bring that point up because obviously i'm covering lots of different performing arts um throughout these videos and it's been like tech theater teaching filmmaking of someone to doing musicians like talking with their uh, experiences now but like um the the idea keeps occurring that it's like it's about like getting yourself out there making contacts with people and through those people you meet other people that know this person that could do with your help or want you to busk it but like use your help whether it's tech or busking eh, at this event and that's just how you get yourself out there is just kind of making these contacts through doing putting yourself out there and doing like gigs etc and it's, it's an industry where you earn most of your kind of respect from just being nice to people definitely um, I, and I, I agree with that yeah if you're as nice to people as possible people won't have bad memories of you they'll think of you when it comes to doing gigs and if you look out for other people as well you can i uh give to get but like not expecting to get if you know what i mean there's actually songs that um come on in the radio and that and i've heard like people doing covers some people that i know people i don't know and i actually just think of them singing that cover because they were so good at it so it's just about making that that sort of impression isn't that yeah and you uh, you kind of build up memories with these people. You go for coffees or whatever, and they, they honestly become some of your best friends. Uh, and I can think of just a, a great crowd of people. Do you know, the last night out I had before lockdown was a pub quiz with the buskers. So we had um, we, we, had, we had a bunch of us, most of us musicians, um, a couple of, uh, well, a magician. And um, we, uh, yeah, we, we did a pub quiz and uh, we actually won. Uh, bonus prize, yeah, it was just... It was hilarious and I got picked to make a paper aeroplane which I can't do um so I embarrassed myself there just a little bit but yeah it was all fun and games. Your arts and craft skills aren't up to date but your music no. certainly is. <laughs> no hand-eye coordination whatsoever. <laughs> I'm sure that's not true. Right um so I just wanted to touch on being a freelance musician. Now personally I think anyone can do that as a career if they're a musician and it's a career path people should follow if they follow that sort of career they should be prepared to have a sort of lifestyle where it's kind of chopping and changing every so often and it's a bit of being here there and everywhere but you're still getting yeah. work and if that's what you inspire to do like because i know there's people out there that like i've came across they've been awesome musicians academically struggled but they're still wanting to do music and it's just like a lot of people are advised against just going to be a musician when in actual fact you can go out and do it so what would your opinion be on that yeah and 
depending on what level you want to get into in terms of music, whether it be record production or um, the gig and scene kind of pub gigs, weddings, yeah. whatever, um, there's always uh, a gig to be had, uh, a gig yeah. to play. Um, everyone's looking for musicians, maybe not at the current, uh, well, in the current climate, but um, generally speaking, there's, uh, yeah, it's a very lucrative business, but mm-hmm. with the catch that it's precarious labour and um, you don't necessarily know where the next gig is going to come from but once you have it you're fine yeah no good point um so obviously a big part of being a musician um especially i think for obviously vocalists and guitar players is songwriting um because the two complement each other um, and totally. so what advice would you give firstly for somebody that's writing a song for their very first time? Oh, um, okay. <laughs> uh, I, do you know, I'm probably ripping this quote off some of the, I can't remember who I heard it from, but it's like, songwriting is like turning on a dirty tap. Um, so, <laughs> like a tap that's not been turned on for like years. And <laughs> as soon as you turn it on for the first time, you're going to get absolute gunk. It comes yeah. through like the water's going to be black and murky. <laughs> and the, if you just leave it on for a long time, then you'll get some clear water coming out. So, yeah, just like start writing no matter what you can come up with. If it's a uh-huh. bad song, then the bin is always there. Um, even though I wouldn't recommend putting anything in the bin, just like save it up for an day. Right. Um, yeah. Because we, I, I wrote a few songs and... I kind of found that I could write songs, but I wanted to be a bit more creative with the process. So what I did was I'd write one song one week, then another one the next week, and then another one the week after, and I'd take the best bits out of each and kind of All right, okay. pile them together. Um, that worked for a while, but like the process changes, um, and you just need yeah. to find out what works for you. Well, yeah, that's a good point. There's many different songwriting techniques that you can use. There's loads out there. I'm happy to share the ones that I know of with anyone that wants to contact me. I'm pretty sure Matthew would be more than happy for people to contact him if they wanted advice about busking, songwriting, anything. He'd be happy to answer to his best ability of what he can. Um, But obviously, once you get that kind of motive for doing songwriting I think I don't want to say it's then easy to write other songs but I think you have a better idea of how you as a musician can write what your sort of style of writing is and you can kind of go from there but it, you made such a good point I've not heard that kind of phrase used before about the dirty tap water but it's so true like I didn't start songwriting to about a year ago I mean the first time I sat down I've set my bit of paper and a pen and I wrote, literally, it literally took me like a full day to write three lines. And then when I read them back the next day, I was like, they're so bad. Like, <laughs> it's just that sort of trial and error, isn't it? Yeah, well, probably the, the biggest friend that we all have is our smartphones. Um, yeah. So I've been very guilty of looking up the rhyming dictionary <laughs> and uh, like finding a word that rhymes with uh, begin um, and then like oh in so that will be at the end of my next line so I just need to try and create a story of what actually rhymes with each other yeah. um, and uh, yeah I just like having the ability to record yourself like just do a, a simple voice recording then it kind of brings back the memory because if you're just looking at the lyrics you'll try and play a different song yeah. um, the next time unless you remember it like perfectly so mm-hmm. yeah a point that I want to add in so um I know Matthew now as a, a good friend of mine, right? But I actually knew Matthew when I was younger from when he bust in Brayhead Shopping Centre. Now, Brilliant. basically, on our first day of uni, I sat down and I was looking, I was like, I recognise his face. I definitely recognise his face. And I mean, you, me- you, you remember what I was like. I sat down at the table and I was like, I hate awkward silence. We need to talk to each other. Yeah, it was a very empty room and then like suddenly more and more people came in and I'm like why are these people staring at me <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and I mean just looking I was like oh are, he's the guy that um was singing in Brayhead before and it's just making those impressions in people because then you do get noticed and then they go oh I've seen that person at this festival or in that place and they're really good and they could actually be booked for like obviously you do work with like weddings and that now don't you uh, yeah, well, again, not in the current climate, but uh, yeah. I had 
think it was 17 weddings booked for May and Amazing. obviously with the uh, current situation everything went out the window but yeah people um, have booked me in like increasing roles over the years so initially it was just drinks reception and then um, it came to the point where I was playing for people walking down the aisle which is nerve-wracking wow. um, and uh, like just playing that song and then seeing like oh, right, and you're sitting there like I want to cry but I need to play a song <laughs> it's pretty cool could you tell us some of the kind of festivals that you've been part of or just like work? So I know you, I don't know, are you one of the workers or you are part of a radio show, aren't you? Yeah, so I currently work with uh, Celtic Music Radio um, and we produce a show on a Saturday evening showcasing uh, new musicians primarily. We have a, a few established acts that have came in. We had um, Aaron Wright, who was formerly in a band called The Charlatans. Um, mm. And uh, he played tea in the park. And then we have people who are just like, haven't played a gig before come into the studio. Yeah, it's man. great to see such a variety. Um, but yeah, I recently played Celtic Connections, the, the Danny Kyle stage. Wow. And I think you can still find that set online um, somewhere. And it's just like a wee MP3 file. And yeah. uh, yeah, they didn't make up the crowd, so whenever the crowd like laughs at any of my jokes, you can just hear me laughing at my own joke, which is <laughs> it's quite funny. Um, yeah, what way to make me feel good about myself, just yeah, laughing at my own jokes. <laughs> no, but that's fabulous. Um, thank you so much for coming on, and I'm sure if any anyone has any questions about the sort of work Matthew does, or even about the commercial music course, if you wanted a second opinion from what I'm giving. Um, I'm sure Matthew would be more than happy for you guys to contact them. Totally. Um, just uh, before we finish, Matthew has a Facebook page um, that he posts all his... Well, you want to tell us a bit about your music page before we... Sure. Um, it's kind of been a bit unloved recently, but um, I've uh, yeah, I'd post where I'm playing, post my gigs, post uh, what I've been up to, um, and recently my live streams. I've been doing live mm -hmm. streams on that. Um, and yeah you can find it it's just facebook if you search matthew gibb um you should find it no bother unless there's i'll attach else it in my name. the video anyway so people will be able to click on it so yeah. you have matthew's page i like <laughs> cheers um and thank you very much for your time matthew no nah, no worries always great to chat um, and as I said, if anybody's getting any further questions, feel free to message me and I can put you through Matthew or you can message Matthew direct and I'm sure he'll be more than happy to Probably. answer anyone's questions. So thank you for that, Matthew. Yeah, no worries. Cheers. Cheers.